So with the shadow of Anime Boston looming, the opportunity recently arose to paint a set of toy guns for a uh, particularly interesting character on Facebook, and it's a challenge that has me crawling back to an old toy box that used to keep used Halloween costumes, and now predominantly stores used cosplay items and junk. I've been keeping the guns I painted for last year's AB here. I found them in the toy section at Walmart for fairly cheap. You do have to break them down a bit, but it's not a hard job to do. I've only been to one store that didn't have the set, but all Walmarts carry this brand, so I assume they were just out. But back to the guns I already owned for a minute. I think they came out awesome. You know they look real when the cop at weapons check rolls around in his hands for two minutes, hands it back to you, and just breathes, crazy. The cool thing is, the project is pretty simple. The first thing you need is the right spray paint. Last year I used Krylon Fusion for plastic, and it is the paint I recommend for this project. The way it bonds to plastic is dope. It's the only paint I've used that covers evenly and doesn't crack no matter how thick you coat it. The finish really looks like gunmetal too and never chips when you scratch it. Although areas that rub up against stuff like a holster sometimes wear away a bit, but that's nothing more of this paint can't fix. So gross. But yes, now we just need to go out and buy our supplies. When I'm looking for something specific like this spray paint, I find it helpful to snap a quick photo before leaving just so that I don't forget when I'm at the store. Luckily, with this project, your local Walmart is usually the only store needed. Leftover gift cards are never needed, but always welcome. Walmart largely carries two spray paint brands, Krylon and Rust-Oleum, and both make a plastic bonding product, so there is some choice. My store was out of the Krylon color I needed, but I had it for Rust-Oleum, so I decided to try it out. Now I have everything I need to start, but first I set up my painting area. An empty and open garage offers plenty of space and ventilation on cold days for the work we'll be doing. Next, I prepare the guns to be repainted. The only thing you really need to do is to make sure the orange cap is covered over so it doesn't get painted. I suppose if you're not planning on LARPing or going to a con, you could skip this step. If you are though, the orange cap is usually the universal symbol for I'm not real, and is required for those sorts of public events. So be a good cub scab, put some blue painter's tape over it, move forward. Your cap protected firearms now get moved into an unused cardboard box where we'll be hanging out for most of the painting process and we can get this thing going. Our Rust-Oleum paint dries in 50 minutes and can be handled in 30, which is a bit faster than the Krylon one. Cool. Spray paint needs to be shaken before used, so enjoy a few minutes of that however you would like. I don't really nitpick on style as long as it's followed. When I spray, I try to keep at least a ruler's distance from the guns at all times, and work quickly but cover lightly. Applying this paint thickly eventually led to cracking and uneven coats. The Krylon competitor is definitely more user friendly. After finishing a coat, I always move the box inside to dry and then move it back out to the garage when I'm ready to paint again. I gave each coat about an hour of dry time and did three coats per side. At this point, I was really happy with how the guns looked overall. A couple of minor grievances, but overall very workable, would buy again. The next part of painting is mostly detail work. The way that the guns are positioned when we paint a side causes us to miss other areas a bit. So now we have to hit the guns at an angle that targets these neglected parts. And just like in painting part one, part two begins with our Amazon box. More specifically, cutting two gun-sized slits in our Amazon box. It's really important to make the slots large enough so that the guns can rest comfortably in them and not fall over when you're carrying the box. Just keep that in mind. With this setup though, we are now much more favorably positioned to paint all the underneath and top parts of the guns that we couldn't reach in part one. Otherwise, the process is basically the same as when we painted before. Three coats, an hour in between, then flip them and repeat. After that's done, we're satisfied with the overall look of the paint job. You can start peeling the tape off the nozzle and reveal its pretty self. There we go, nice and orange. We're not getting kicked out of the convention. So if you get to this point, you're basically done. If you add everything up, it's about $16 for materials and maybe two afternoons for time requirement. Appreciation for the work is priceless. If you're like me though, you use a small amount of white Krylon to add some classic Deadpool style customs, even if it costs you a paintbrush. It's fun to give the client more. That's as she said. All dirty thoughts aside, there's still one more test the guns have to pass. Do they still shoot? Face of, 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 face of,
Some pills. 